rules of getting getting put on and grinding skipper. At this point, I I thought they were going different directions, but hey, again, like you said, Chicago. We already expect Chicago to do some off the wall things when it's time to pick their players, pick their management, and <laughs> we'll see what happens, man. Like, I, I think that. Uh, he's, uh, we all know he's a Hall of Fame manager, but with these, the White Sox is, if I'm not mistaken, they were the youngest team in the league besides the uh, Marlins, I want to say. I think they are the youngest. They, you know, how, how is he going to relate to these younger ball players? Man? I mean, McKinnon did it with um, the Marlins that one year. But I, I don't know, man. It's, I mean, on paper, with his credentials, you're looking at it should at least make the playoffs. But what position you gonna? I don't know. <laughs> what position? I'm gonna have to just manage the Oh, okay. <laughs> How many times you gonna get to bat and hit a home run or get on base? Hey man, but you can think about it. The manager is, is good for at least uh, 15 to 20 wins in a major league season. Though. I agree. I mean, I mean, every team in the history of baseball will either win. They, they, the baseball breaks down like this: you're gonna win 60 games and you're gonna lose 60 games. It's that other 20 that make the difference. Everybody in baseball is going to win and lose 60 games. That is without fail. It's the other, it's the 20 that you, it's the, the it's, it's, it's 160 games, so it's 40 games that's in the air. Hey, man. I'm, I don't, like, like you said, big dog, on paper, this is a great move. How's he gonna relate to a bunch of twenty year olds and nineteen year olds and you know things like that? I don't know. Are they gonna buck buck against the system? Is he? I mean, this is a dude who's good friends with the Tuna. For those who don't know who the Tuna is, that's Bill Parcells. He's good friends with Bobby Knight, the general, and him. So how does he coach? Does he do? Cause the general and the Tuna have a similar coaching style. You have to be acclimated into their way of thinking. Young people don't think like that no more. Now, if Tony is his own man, and those he just got two friends who are hard nosed, old school, and he knows how to dip in and dip out. But and at the end of the day, Parcells is a dude. I've heard very few players say one bad word about Bill Parcells. I've heard very few players say one bad word about the general. So I don't know, man, but I definitely think it was a dumbass move to fire somebody because you fired them 35 years ago. You wrongfully fired them 35 years ago. And there's just, I don't know, it's one of those wait and sees. Uh, anybody know me? No, I've been a White Sox fan my whole life, but it is what it is, man. With that being said, next up, speaking of firing... Speaking of the nonsense, somebody uh, is listening to the show. Please uh, hit the phone on mute. Uh, uh, with that being said, my man Hinch getting his job back in Detroit. Obviously, he really wants to manage. Otherwise, he wouldn't have taken the Detroit Tigers job. Their, their, their farm system is trash. Uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Their team is old and rebuilding. But hey, if you want to get back in baseball, you take what you can get. Should he have been let back in baseball so fast, or does it really make a difference? I'm listening. I don't think it really makes a difference. AJ has got got the acumen of being a World Series champion at this point. Regards, it might have a a side eye or ashes in regards to the whole thing, but. This baseball, man, they 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 recycle those coach those matches as quickly as possible. Yes, man. 
I think it's this, this is just it's a world of second chance. Man, I think you so I to be back in the game. Um, Joey Cora might be back in the game too with the, with me playing the Red Sox. So. Should have been back. I don't have a problem with him being back. I would have taken the damn Detroit Tigers job. Uh, I don't I want to get back in baseball that bad because, look, you're already going in as a dude uh, uh, who's caught cheating. If this team looks the way it's scheduled to look, you're going to really look bad. Me personally, I would have waited until something better came along. And if the Detroit uh, Tigers, uh, 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 if the Detroit Tigers want to hire you, that means somebody else will more than likely hire you as well. He definitely wasn't going to get the Boston job because one of his assistants was caught cheating over there. So, I don't know, man. And then they said he really, well, they, they, they had fast covered it for him like ESPN always do. So, I don't fucking know. Man. I don't have a problem with him being back in baseball. I'm just saying... For my money, I would ain't no way in hell I'd have taken that job. I'm just I'm just gonna cool out for a couple of years. See if I give me a job on MLB on MLB Network, that old boring ass network, and then I'd have waited it out. So think of it like think of it like a strategy for him, right? Seeing that what if he does build this thing back up the way it's supposed to be? Well, the fact that it's really watch it anyway, but See if he actually gets them to the promised land or get over that hump. That means that 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 might be the talent that he's looking for. So maybe that's the reason. I'm with Rocker. Hell no, not the Tigers. I mean, see, that's the thing. <laughs> baseball is one of those games. Baseball is might be the only game that you truly need talent. Now he might be able to coach them up to seventy wins, or hell, if he if he even get on a roll, he might be able to coach them up to uh, uh, 500, which would be beyond awesome. But I'm just not, me and the Rockers in the green. And like you said, that's a lot of fucking building because they don't have any, they don't have any bricks. They making brick. Hey, 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 if he turn this thing around, they need you need to tell this man the most because he literally just making brick without straw. You know that's that's just a. I mean, man, with no, no, no. actually, they um they got the second rate farm system in the NBA But I thought that was double A. No, the first I mean, six. Oh, okay. The number one is uh, Tampa Bay. That's crazy. And they just went to the uh, World Series. And number two, they got the Detroit Tigers. Oh, okay. But. That's still, that, that don't mean that that's going to translate into. Uh, Major League victory. But it does, it does give me, it does put that situation in a better light. But as far as uh, Major League uh, product. That probably would have been the, like the last team I probably would have went to because they, they changed managers like uh, draws. The, the Bulls changed coaches. Right. So, big up to him, man. I hope he does well. Well, only, I mean, I hope he lose every game in Chicago and every time Chicago go up there. But besides that, he will rest of the league last. Uh, big up to him. Uh, Wish him the best. With that being said, man, as we talked about at the top of the show, the National Basketball Association has a few interesting hires, a few things going on. Let's start at the hiring thing. Mike Dan D'Antoni or D'Antoni or however you want to pronounce it is Steve Nash's assistant. All I have to say, hey, hey, who, who got the TV on, man? And man, we ain't got no TVs in my house, man. Because I had to go vote for the fucking thing. Mike D'Antoni 
has the uh, uh, assistant job, head, number one assistant job with Steve Nash. Thoughts on that? And then, and then that was a step back. So go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, because I, I was pretty much going to kind of say that too. Okay, yeah, I feel that was a step back, because now you're coaching <coughs> under people that you coach. And it's like, you know, you got Steve Nash, got a Mark on that on that coach staff, and then that Tony. It's like, maybe you're trying to get the perfect mind back together to Parking had in Phoenix, but it's like I think it's a step back. But if you want to say, if you want to say, keep in the job, do your thing, yeah, Tony. Because I kind of figured that he was going to get another coaching opportunity, but I guess he, um, pretty much because of, according to um, the rest. <laughs> and his buddy, uh, they're going to be pretty much going to be uh, a coaching back to bitty thing now. So, I don't know. I, I, I just don't see. Well, he's one of the most brilliant offensive minded coaches in the NBA. Right at the NBA this season. So, by him not being the actual coach of the team, maybe they can incorporate at least a. Uh, Act like you play defense, and they <laughs> they set they defensive set, but um, it was it was a, it was a strange hiring as far as an assistant. I, I said because I figured he could have got uh, another coaching job. Somebody would have hired him. Well, I think if it wasn't for um, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, I think it would be an awesome move. I don't think it's a step behind. It's, it's millions of coaches. It's not like Mike D'Antoni won an NBA championship. It's not like Mike D'Antoni even went to the NBA Finals before. Mike D'Antoni is a guy who's won a lot of games. And that's it. He's just won a lot of games. As, as Ant just stated, you're looking at a dude who is a brilliant... Mike D'Antoni has the entire National Basketball Association playing like he wants to play. So when you got the whole league playing like you, obviously you've made a gigantic difference. He's the Ed Coriel of his day. He is the, uh, uh, there's a million other guys I can name that just, you know, the, the uh, what's his name up in Buffalo? Uh, uh, he the, uh, Sam Weish of his day. Because Sam Weish and uh, 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 Sam, uh, 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 Mark, Marv Levy, they changed football. Sam Weish had the K-Gun off. I mean, he had the, uh, fast break offense, and he had the Bengals rolling. That's what a lot of people don't remember, that the Bengals was doing that no huddle thing way before anybody. And then they beat the hell out the Bills, and then the next year the Bills came back with the K-Gun. Mike D'Antoni, D'Antoni or Dan Tony, however you want to pronounce it, I hope I'm not disrespecting you. This dude has changed basketball. So, as again, as I said, he has a brilliant mind. I have zero, less than zero. Take zero, Divided by 45 billion and then divide that number by 45 billion. That's how much faith I have in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. They pay too much attention to what's going on off the basketball court. Once they get once Kevin Durant gets on the basketball court, there's no question of him. Kyrie Irving seems to be a cancer, so then that may be a problem. And if you split them up, the other one is gonna have a baby. So I in Brooklyn, as RC and number one Chief Rocket Jersey Byrne said, I think that that's going to be unsuccessful. If let's say if they went up 95 south a few miles, uh, 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 I mean, what did I say? Cleveland, I mean, uh, New Jersey, uh, Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, I think it's a problem. If they went over the bridge and went to Manhattan and played with the Knicks, it might work because then you got. A bunch of young players that need to buy into a system, and it's a fun. It looks like a fun system, and it doesn't cause for you to think about what you're gonna do. If you feel it, let it fly. So that's what these young boys are used to. But with Kevin Durant and Kyrie, like I said, man, every place Kyrie go touches turns to cock cock. He was in Cleveland. They had the number one pick in the draft three straight years. He goes to Boston. And they were killing 
When he got there, they got bumped. When he leaves, they get hard again. He go to Brooklyn.